This one mineral that I doubt you've ever applied could increase your legume yields by over 50%, and that's cobalt. So cobalt is quite an interesting one. It's technically not classified as an essential plant nutrient yet, but there is a growing amount of evidence to support that cobalt is essential for, uh, at the very least, legumes, but also a lot of other plants. So at this stage, it's a non-essential mineral because it seems that plants can survive without it. But nevertheless, in terms of our crop production, an application of cobalt can generate a really nice yield response. So we'll be talking about how cobalt functions in the plant, as well as how we manage it as regenerative consultants. So the first important function of cobalt is in anything that fixes nitrogen. So this is both legumes as well as nitrogen fixing bacteria. And so there's two main functions or enzymes that cobalt is used in, in terms of nitrogen fixation. The first one is something I can't pronounce, and you can say it here. This enzyme is required in the production of leg hemoglobin, which is the enzyme which transports iron in the nodules. And so without it, the nitrogenase enzyme can't function because it needs a low oxygen environment. Uh, and, and, and so therefore, without cobalt, you don't get leg hemoglobin. And without leg hemoglobin, you don't get nitrogen fixation. So that's the first one. The second one is cobalt's required in B12, which is also required for nitrogen fixation. So the combination of these two things means that without cobalt, you get some really interesting effects on the plant. And likewise, when you apply cobalt, you get some really great uh, benefits. So the first benefit is the size of the rhizobium in the legumes. And so you see here a study of lupins before and after the application or with and without cobalt. You'll see that the bacteria size or volume within the nodules of the lupin goes from 2.6 in the cobalt deficient plant to 3.2 in the cobalt sufficient plant. So that's a pretty big increase when you think about it in terms of volume. That's gonna mean that there's more nitrogen fixation occurring in the plants that have good cobalt because it got a larger size bacteria. Likewise, you'll see in this table, the number of nodules increased as well as the number of bacteria within each nodule increased as well. And so when you think about the combination of not only more or larger nodules, but also those nodules are then full of more bacteria, it makes for a very interesting increase in the nitrogen fixation, or at least the ability for that plant to, to fix nitrogen. And this was seen in a study with peanuts, where they did a control cobalt uh, inoculated seed treatment, foliar applications, and the combination of foliars and seed treatments. And so what they found was a really nice increase in yield, as well as total nitrogen at maturity and nodulation. And so that's just with a simple addition of cobalt. It wouldn't have been that expensive to get such a massive increase in yield. And so when we think about legume nutrition, I think cobalt is massive and we need to start paying attention to it, especially for trying to fix as much nitrogen ourselves as possible. But then secondly, in every other crop that isn't a legume, there is still microbes in the soil that fix nitrogen. And so cobalt is still required for those bacteria to then fix nitrogen outside of the plant. And then through the rhizophagy cycle or through cycling, that can then supply the crop with nitrogen. And so it's unknown as to how much of an increase in nitrogen fixation is possible with good cobalt levels. But I'd suggest if you're cobalt efficient, that could unlock a few extra kilos of nitrogen per hectare through those free living nitrogen fixing bacteria, which then also allow you to then reduce your nitrogen inputs over time. So that's a big one, nitrogen fixation. You can't quite have it without cobalt. Applications of cobalt would be quite beneficial for that. The next big function is actually in the regulation of a few hormones. So it seems that cobalt increases auxin as well as cytokine production. So when you think about these two hormones, auxin is cell uh, elongation, which is uh, like grain fill or extending the root zone out. So this, this is more so with expansion or, or growth. Cytokine is required for cell division or it stimulates cell division. And so not only are you getting an increase in cell division, which is increased number of cells per area, but also extending them or filling those cells out with cell extension. So overall, quite beneficial for plant growth. The other component is that it decreases ethylene or it inhibits ethylene production. So when we're thinking about inhibiting or preventing the senescing of the plant. And so if you wanna get an extra week to 10 days of grain fill period, you can make an application of cobalt, which then decreases ethylene and ethylene causes the senescence and ripening of the plant. Um, so with the application of cobalt, we can prevent that, extend grain fill, which means loading the grain up or, or the fruit up with more sugar. And it can be quite beneficial to get an extra increase in yield through this. Now, there's a few other references to uh, abiotic stress factors. So it seems that cobalt can help the plant deal with abiotic stress factors. And I guess abiotic stress factors ultimately come down to increase in ethylene production. And so whether that's drought, 
or salinity, that all drives ethylene. And so if we can decrease ethylene production, we can should increase the ability of the plant to resist a lot of abiotic stress factors. So mainly heat, salinity, likely pH as well. So when we're thinking about cobalt in our soil, typically what we want to be aiming for is greater than five parts per million in our total. On our soil test, we get uh, the total done for cobalt. And if it's below that five parts per million, that's really when you're going to start seeing deficiencies. A lot of the literature references, I think 15 to 25 parts per million in the soil as the usual range. But if you can get it above five parts per million, that's pretty good. And typically that's what we're aiming for. So if it's below this uh, five parts per million, either foliar applications of cobalt can work, likewise seed treatments or a soil application of cobalt. Now, you gotta be careful with cobalt because it can be quite toxic in high concentrations. So it's important just to do little amounts every now and then. And typically what happens with cobalt is that the cobalt goes into the roots and typically it accumulates in the roots. So less is taken up into the actual stem, but more so in the roots. Still needs it in the plant uh, to some extent, but typically it's gonna accumulate in the roots, mainly for what I would assume is uh, the cytokine production and especially in our legumes, for going into the nodules for B12 production. Which means when we're making follow applications, we need to find a source that's going to translocate into uh, the root zone. For that, I'd assume the cobalt chelates as well as cobalt sulfate that's been uh, chelated with folic acid should do a all right job of getting into the plant. Cobalt's one of those things that it's still very much a gray area. So we don't fully understand what's going on within the plant as well as its functions. The other option is to make sure you're including your seed treatments because it's because then it's actually in the plant and we get all that benefit from the start. Uh, but then the other component is a soil application through a boom of cobalt onto the soil. And so the reason why I suggest that rather than a follow application is that if we're just doing a follow application for the vegetation, then we're not getting as much cobalt into the ground or we have to wait until the end of the season for that residue to then break down. What ultimately we want when we're not dealing with legumes is for that cobalt to hit the ground so that the soil microbes can actually use it for their nitrogen fixation. And so potentially a soil application of cobalt to increase the cobalt levels in the, in the soil, not only assist with the uptake of cobalt in the, in the following seasons, but then with the soil biology too. Now cobalt is immobile within the plant, meaning once it's used up in the plant, it doesn't tend to move. And so for that reason, on a differential sap test, typically you'll see a deficiency come on when you have high, higher amounts in the older leaves and lesser amounts in the younger leaves. I wouldn't worry too much about this because it is a non-essential mineral. There's likely other things to fix before this, but if you're gonna make an application, you can check your differential sap tests as well as your soil test and make a really good decision based on all those factors together. Anyways, if that sounds interesting to you and you want to increase your nitrogen fixation with the use of cobalt, come speak to us, sit down for a free consultation and we can go over some recommendations on how you can start to regenerate your farm. My name's Till, cheers.